the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, and a very warm welcome to Mass here in St. Martin's, and wherever and whenever you're watching this Mass, you are very, very welcome. The, the sixth Sunday of Easter, we carry on the same theme really as last week. We are still in John chapter 15 in the Gospel and Jesus will still speak of bearing fruit. This time, however, he'll be particular. The fruit that we are to bear is the fruit of love. So for all the times when we failed to love one another, failed to love neighbor, failed to love God, let's seek his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. So let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honour of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As Peter reached the house, Cornelius went out to meet him, knelt at his feet, and prostrated himself. But Peter helped him up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man after all. Then Peter addressed them. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came down on all the listeners, Jewish believers, who had accompanied Peter were all astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit should be poured out on the pagans too. Since they could hear them speaking strange languages and proclaiming the greatness of God. Peter himself then said, could anyone refuse the water of baptism to these people now they have received the Holy Spirit just as much as we have? He then gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, they begged him to stay on for some days. The word of the Lord. The response. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has shown salvation to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. The Lord has shown his salvation to the nations. Please stand for the Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him and shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. 
If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants anymore because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father. You did not choose me, no, I chose you and commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask him in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may remember that the greatest commandment is to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, all our strength. Everything we have, we have to love God. And yet, even if we love God with everything we have, love is not used up, because then that expression of love of God goes on to the second of the great commandments, to love our neighbor as ourself. And now Jesus is saying, but there's another type of love now. And that is the love that Christians should have for one another. That's the love that should be part of our communion, our fellowship. And that as brothers and sisters of the Lord, as sons and daughters of the Father, we form a new family. A family where there should be no barriers of race, or religion, or gender, that all these barriers fall because, St. St. Paul will say later, because we're all one in Christ. This at times has been so profound that it was part of the attraction of the church to men and women outside of it. See how these Christians love one another. Of course, when we say that now, it's often ironic. It's often telling quite the opposite of our love for one another. And so Jesus is commanding that community that they are to build up bonds of family relationship within this new community of faith. And one of the first challenges that community of faith had, remember it begins within the Jewish faith, and the Jewish faith needed to protect themselves down through the centuries, down through the millennia, as worshippers of God by keeping themselves separate from the nations around them. And so, when these Christians, these Jews become Christians, there's no roadmap as to what's to happen next. And one group said, well, in order to be able to extend the family, everybody has to become Jewish. St. Paul, on the other hand, along with other group of Christians, said, no, it is belief in the Lord Jesus that makes you a member of this new family. It's baptism that makes you a member of this new family. And so, it was a big debate. And here in that first reading, we see Peter, who is the leader of the church. He is the, the man at the center, being convinced by an act of God as the Holy Spirit falls not simply on a group of Jewish Christians, but falls on a group of pagan believers, pagan men and women who have decided to follow the Lord, and the Holy Spirit falls on them. And it's that piece of evidence that Peter then says, now I'm convinced that the message of Jesus is not for Jews alone, but for every single human being, that the barrier between Jew and Gentile, between the Jews and the nation, has come down. And it takes us back to Good Friday, when the curtain in the temple, the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from all of the world, tears in two. The barrier's gone. So the command to the Christian community is to love one another, but it's not an excluding love. We are to be a family that's always open to new people, new experiences, and that the 
that the driving force of everything we do should be love of God, love of neighbor, love of one another, and says Jesus at its highest, love of enemy itself. But then he says that beautiful thing, that you are his friends, that we are his friends, not just brothers and sisters, not just creatures, but friends. But the quality of friendship is the quality of love, and we deepen that friendship with him as we deepen our love for one another. Can I ask you to stand, please, for our bidding prayers? Sisters and brothers, let us pray to the Lord of love. For believers, that we may be known by our love for each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For people who follow Christ, that they may care for their neighbors. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all people, that they may look after those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those suffering because of COVID-19 in India, South America, and here in Scotland too. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For everyone who is upset or anxious. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those whose sufferings are over, for all are dead, that they may experience eternal life and love in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So let's open our own hearts and lives to the love of the Lord, bringing those that we care for before him. And I offer this Mass in particular for the repose of the soul of Roseanne and Andrew Plain. And as we pray for Roseanne and Andrew, we commend them to the prayers of the saints, the prayers of St. Martin, and the prayers of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Ever loving God, we sing a song of praise to your name, for you have worked wonders. Continue to guide your people and hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This, of course, is the month of May, and we should remind ourselves, of course, that in Mary, heaven and earth meet. In Mary, Jesus becomes the fruit of her womb. She becomes the fruit of our love of God, and that we ourselves are to follow Our Lady in bearing Jesus Christ in our hearts. He, in the end, is the fruit we are to bear. Uh, and so, on Wednesday evenings, next, next three Wednesday evenings, uh, there will be on YouTube a recorded of the rosary uh, being said, uh, probably the glorious mysteries uh, uh, will be said, but it will be a chance just to reacquaint ourselves with the rosary. It's one of the things that have sort of gone by the wayside. So they'll be recorded over these next three Wednesday evenings. But also, of course, uh, on Thursday, we are celebrating the Solemnity of the Ascension. Mass here in Trinet will be at 10 a.m., the usual Thursday morning time. Uh, and if you're wanting to go to a vigil for that Mass, then there's one in Musselburgh at 7 p.m. And just again, just to remind ourselves, that uh, because of the pandemic and the way things are, it's difficult to know when Mass comes to an end. So we just remind ourselves again that it's as we've left the building that Mass comes to the end for us, and as the Blessed Sacrament goes back into the tabernacle, it comes to an end. But because we've been recorded, it will come to an end then as uh, we leave the altar. And I'm very pleased to have Callum back on the altar again. It's good. It's been over a year, I think, Callum, isn't it, since you were able to serve Mass. It's one more sign that we're just beginning to open up a little bit. Uh, we're having to learn sort of social distance rules like that on the altar. But, Callum, you are very welcome. And in time, we'll get the other altar servers back as well, even if in ones or twos.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Martin of Tours, and all the saints who had pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So let's just pray for a moment, asking for God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So before we receive communion ourselves, let's remember those who are still social isolating and those who have not been able to come to communion for some time. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, although you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. So let's stand to pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass has ended. of
Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The 